Hey, my name is Andreas, and I'm one of the co-founders of Zenscrape, a web scraping API. In today's tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the basic concepts of web scraping with Node.js and Puppeteer, which allows us to control the headless browser programmatically. Before we start, I want to talk a little bit about when it makes sense to use this set of technologies. The reason I'm saying this is because Puppeteer is rather resource intensive in terms of CPU consumption. If your computer has six cores, you can approximately launch six browser instances simultaneously. So when do I use Puppeteer for web scraping? Okay, let's take a look at the following website. It's an online store for cookies. Let's say I'm interested in this content section because I'd like to scrape all product names and price information. When I look at a site like this, I always start with the easiest and quickest way I can think of and see whether we can get some results. To do that, I open up a terminal and fire a curl request and save the response in an HTML file called test.html. All right, now that that is done, let's open up the response in a code editor. And you might have already expected it. The product information and the prices aren't there. Why? Okay, let's go back in our browser for a second. Developer tools, network tab, and XHR. XHR filters all web traffic that's happening between your web browser and the server. So let's refresh the page once more. And there we are. We immediately see that there's a request sent to the web server that returns our desired piece of information. From that, we can see that the information is not part of the initial HTML that we are retrieving from the server, but loaded asynchronously once the basic elements of the page have loaded. Okay, normally there are a few things I would still check before I decide to move on with rendering the entire page in a browser. But since this tutorial is supposed to be about Node.js and Puppeteer, I'll just move on. Okay, first, let's create a new folder and initiate a new NPM instance. Yeah, it will ask us a bunch of questions. We'll just skip all that. npm install puppeteer. All right, let's create a new file and call it scraper.s. And then write puppeteer require puppeteer. Okay, we then tell puppeteer to start up. We'll do that using arrow functions. All right, we open an empty page in our browser and navigate to our target URL. Okay, you probably saw me type this await here. That's a feature that came together with one of the newer ES versions. It's a very simple statement that tells Puppeteer to wait until the command to the right is completed. Okay, we're doing that just once more again and tell the browser to stop proceeding until the element that we need is visible. For that, let's check the correct select in the browser once more. Okay, that's it. Okay, now the page is in the state that we need for scraping. We now access the DOM. Calling the page evaluate function and save everything it returns in a variable.
Since we want to scrape all products that are inside this container, we go and back into our inspection tool once more. Okay, cool. This will be easy since they all share a common class name called single product collection. We can access the element through the document body. Okay, let's save it into a variable called all products. Done. Now, what is left to do is to loop over all selected items and extract the title and the price information. First, we create an empty array that will contain our results later on. And now we'll open the loop. Once more, we hop back into the inspection tool and see that our title is selectable through a simple H4. and the string containing the price information through the class name rec price. All right, now let's push the object into our array and define null as a fallback value in case the selective does not work for one of the products. This is just a pattern that I commonly use. Our evaluate function returns the object containing all scraped information, which we lock here, so we can see all scraped results. Done. Let's close the browser. Now, as a last step, we add a catch function to our then function from above. In case anything goes wrong inside this function here, JavaScript will automatically jump to the catch function and return the error so we can see what the problem is and debug everything accordingly. Enough for the coding part. Let's run everything inside our terminal. Oh yes, before I forget it, let's add one last thing to our code. By default, our Chrome instance launches in headless mode. For the development of a scraper, I really like to turn that off so the browser window actually opens and I can see what's happening. This especially makes debugging a whole lot easier. All right, let's run the scraper. And there it is. I hope you like this tutorial. If you have any questions, simply comment below.